Hello, this is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Herodimos, and today we're going to derive the Pythagorean trigonometric identities. Uh, some people like to know where these identities come from, and uh, well, they come from a unit circle. At least that's where the genesis of it is. What's a unit circle? A unit circle is a circle that, of course, I have here centered at the origin, and it has a radius of one. We call that a one unit or a unit circle. Uh, I'm going to let the angle represented by this radius is t. Normally you, we use theta, but it's just going to be more convenient if I use the letter t. It's hard for me to use theta sometimes in these computers. So I'm going to say the angle is t. All right, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a segment down uh, starting from this point right here. I draw it right down to the x-axis and it's a right angle right there. And of course uh, we know that uh, this has to be the x value, this is the y value, let's make sure you can really see that x, and that's the y value. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because this point has an x value, that is the horizontal, and it has the uh, a vertical, right, it has a vertical, which is a uh, the y value. Okay, so that's the location of that point right there. Uh, but I want to translate this into the world of uh, trigonometry. So uh, I'm going to say that the cosine of this angle t, I'm just going to start with cosine, I like cosine. So if I were to take the cosine of angle t, remember it's equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it would be x over 1. Or we would just say that the cosine of t is equal to x. Uh, likewise, we could say that the cos oh, I'm sorry, the sine of t is equal to right the opposite y over the hypotenuse one. It's y over one, or in other words, sine of t is really just equal to y. So sometimes you'll see people refer to this point not as x and y. Sometimes you see them refer to the point also as uh, x would be cosine of t and the y would be sine of t. So that might be a common uh, point reference that they use for that point instead of x and y. <clears throat> Alright, well we know that if we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem we know that it's uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember that Pythagorean identity. Well, if you square the legs, now remember x is really just equal to the cosine of t, and y is really just equal to the sine of t. So this is really x, uh, x is cosine of t, this is, uh, this is of course sine of t. So instead of me going a squared, right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right, where these are legs, this is the hypotenuse. Instead, I'm going to say this is x squared, or I can call this x squared, it doesn't matter. These are the two legs, so I could, either one of these is legs. So I'll put in um, one of the legs is sine t, the other leg is cosine of t, and then the other, the actually the other side is one. That's the hypotenuse. Now remember, if you square the legs and you square the hypotenuse, I have to add these two guys together, and it's equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So you can see we have our first trigonometric identity right here. We got sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to one. All right, so there you go. There's our first trigonometric identity right there. All right, there's our first one. Well, you know, there are two more. So in uh, the other way, you get the other two are actually quite simple. Uh, you're going to take that first Pythagorean identity that we came up with, right? We just came up with this one, and we land up dividing it. And it depends on what we divide it by. Depends on which other Pythagorean identity we get. So let's say I want to divide everything, and divide all terms by the sine squared of t. So I'm going to divide everything by sine squared t. 
right? I could do that with any equation. So what am I going to get? This is going to be 1. This is going to be, well, sine over cosine is tangent. Uh, sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. But I have the reciprocal. This is cosine over sine. So instead of tangent squared, this is cotangent, the reciprocal, right? It's cotangent squared. And let's see, this is the reciprocal of sine. We know the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, except it's squared. So this is going to be cosecant squared. And there you go. There's our second trigonometric identity. All right, now let's go to our last. Again, we're going to start with the base Pythagorean identity that we spent so much time trying to prove using the unit circle. Now we're going to divide it again, except we're going to divide it by something a little bit different. We're not going to divide it this time by the sine squared. Now we're going to divide it by cosine squared of the angle. So we divide everything by cosine squared, which we could do for an equation, Just dividing it all by the same value. All right, this one should be a little bit easier. Uh, let's see, sine over cosine, that's tangent. Except they've got squares, so it's tangent squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. Now this is the reciprocal of cosine. So the reciprocal of cosine is secant, except that's squared, so it's going to be secant squared. So you have to understand those reciprocal uh, relationships to get this. And that's our third and our last Pythagorean identity. All right, so it took a little bit of work to understand this first one. But once you get the first one down, it then, you know, it, it leads to the other two. Okay, just by a, doing a, a simple division. Okay, so therefore we do have three uh, trigonometric identities, and there they are. So please go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, our lessons, and our other videos. Take care.